Hi and welcome to another chemistry lesson. Uh, in this lesson I'm looking at acids and bases, specifically at titrations. Now what is a titration? A titrate, a titration is finding, finding the, or let's say, finding the unknown concentration, unknown concentration, of an acid or a base or a base by neutralizing neutralizing that is spelled wrong neutraling <laughs> neutralizing it with a known concentration known cons concentration of a base or acid okay so obviously the opposite so what what basically happens is I have an acid okay so let's say I've got an acid it's not the acid I want there we go I've got an acid which is some sort of hydrogen um, combined with an anion and then uh, is it no yes get an anion and then what I do is it depends if the acid is the unknown concentration but what I'm going to do is add a base to it a base okay here's my base again it's my hyd hydroxide ion with some uh, cation okay so here's an acid in a base when they react they produce like this they produce a salt which is the base uh, the uh, cation and the anion plus water okay that's what they produce now if i have acid and i have base and i've got all of my acid reacting with all of my base okay so there's no excess acid or excess base then in the, the result will be salt and water salty water and this will have a pH of somewhere around uh, the p the pH will be somewhere around 7 Okay, while well, before the time, it depends which one is in excess. If I have more acid, obviously I will have a pH less than 7. Or if I have the base in excess, I will have a pH greater than 7. Okay, so it's all about getting the correct amount of the alternative so if I had acid in excess I will add base until they have completely reacted to produce a pH of about 7 which means I have neutralized the equation now in this I will have a coefficient here after I have actually uh, uh, balanced the equation sorry for that okay I'm going to have two two coefficients here might just be one or one but it might also be two and one or one and two or whatever the the uh, balanced equation is but what these coefficients are going to be very important because it will tell me the amount of moles that will react relative to one another okay so that is going to become very important now as I said one of these would be unknown and this is how the experiment is going to look we are going to have a burette okay so a burette is this long cylindrical syringe looking apparatus with a little tap at the bottom which allows me to drip a substance liquid substance from it and it also has markings to indicate volume okay or um, uh, yeah volume it might be in 
in liquid form but and it they, it will be on a stand you do the stand and the darker color uh, a burette clamp is what we'll call this one actually I can do this okay so we have a burette clamp holding it in place and then here at the bottom uh, we will have a conical flask now in the conical f I'll tell you now what will be in what conical flask it's got this triangular shaped base okay brown base but triangular at the bottom uh, which makes it easy to swirl the solution so if I want to mix things in there um, I'll swirl it and now uh, this is the burette burette and in here we've got our pip, uh, we've got our conical flask conical flask okay so in my conical flask I will have an unknown solution Okay, so this is the one it can either be my acid or it can can be my base but in here I will have an unknown solution unknown solution now if I say my um, solution is unknown what I mean is a uh, uh, concentration unknown concentration concentration now remember the the formula for concentration is concentration is moles over volume now concentration is unknown not because volume is unknown volume can be measured volume can always be known we just need to measure it okay so volume is known it is the moles that are unknown so we don't know how many moles of substance there is okay now what we'll what we'll have in the top here is we can put in a known solution in here we can add a known solution we can mix the solution ourselves so let me give a basic example uh, vinegar vinegar is an acidic solution but we don't know the concentration of um, of the acid in vinegar so what we could do is we can try and neutralize it to find the concentration in normal vinegar and what we'll need then up here is a base to react with the vinegar that we're going to drop in now this one is going to have a known concentration so this is a known concentration okay in other words in here we know the moles per volume now as we uh, drip it in here how will we know it is neutralized well what we'll have in here with mixed in here will be a indicator indicator okay so for example if in here we have a base okay we'll add some phenolphthalene fin uh, well, let me not write it we'll add some phenolphthalene because we know phenolphthalene from the previous video has a pinkish color in a base and when it's neutralized it will be um, um, uh, sl uh, slightly pink okay well let me actually show you show you that again okay so phenolphthalein will have a dark pink and it goes down like this okay so phenolphthalein looks like that the range that it covers where white represents a clear solution okay and phenolphthalein 
if you remember the the little table I gave you with methyl orange, uh, brimo, uh, brimo, bromothymol blue, and phenolphthalein, you will be able to figure out where I get these values. This ranges from 8.5 to about 10. So if we have a base in here, we will know that the base will color it, will give it a pinkish color. But the moment I get it to be completely clear, then I know that I am less than 8.5, which means I'm close to 7 which is r roughly what I'm looking for okay so um, so that's what we're going to do if we had a base in here if we had a acid in there we will rather add a um, methyl orange and the reason why is because methyl orange its range goes something like this and there we go so Okay, I made it a little bit shorter range, but again from that table I showed you in the previous video and uh, how to remember it, please go and look if you can't, remember it goes from four and a half to about six. Okay, at four and a half or anything less than four, over an, uh, four and a half, it will be red, which means an acidic solution will display red here at the bottom. Okay, and as I drop in my base at that time, it will start coloring more towards yellow so that as soon as it's a nice bright yellow then I know that it's more than six again more than six will suggest that it's close to seven and uh, um, and I, obviously I shouldn't go f much further than as than than the color that I was requiring uh, I shouldn't add much more because then I would start making it acidic again and that's not I do want to avoid that of course so this is uh, um, uh, how we would do it again I was telling you that if we have the known concentration in here that the volume is known the moles are known now if I know that I have this reaction I have two coefficients here one coefficient would be a known coefficient so let me name it RK and one coefficient even though the coefficient is known it represents the substance that was unknown okay so this one in my burette I will um, it will tell me the ratio of the known and in my conical flask I will have the ratio of the unknown okay so Based on this, I would know that there is some ratio of known that has reacted with the ratio of unknown. I want to use this one, unknown. Okay, now when it comes to the moles, the actual moles, um, the one is known, so I would know how many moles I use. How would I know? Well, this is what you would do. You would you have your reading volume off of the burette isn't it so these little little lines indicate volume so now you start with a certain volume and as you drip out you've used up some volume so volume is known and concentration is known okay again we said that this is a known concentration so what I would do is I'll use n to find the known Const the known moles used I will simply take the known concentration multiplied by the known by this known volume okay so in the end I will very easily be able to find the known constant uh, sorry the known moles used so n k now this must keep the same ratio as up here so these this ratio must represent this ratio the no, the moles used and of the known will react with the in the same ratio as up here with the unknown so what you could do at this stage is you can just divide these two ratios with one another so in other words the um, the known concentration can be divided by the coefficient of the known substance in the balanced equation there and that should equal the known the unknown moles divided by the unknowns coefficient here whichever one that might be okay the acid or the base 
Now, let's just once again look here. This is what I'm trying to find. So if I'm trying to find the moles of the unknown, then I have that one. And then I can find the concentration by just dividing by the volume that I had in here. Again, volume can just be measured. Okay, so I do that by just multiplying both sides with, with um, RU, uh, RU, the coefficient of the unknown concentrations um, uh, value in the equation. So here we've got, now if I do that, this side cancels, so I'm left with this, the the unknown moles are equal to, I've multiplied both sides with RU, or well I was supposed to, so I've got RU, that's the coefficient of the unknown, multiplied by the moles of the known, divided by the coefficient of the known. Okay, and again just to expand this slightly more so that I can actually just have a wonderful equation that is not on your formula sheet, but you can if you know where it comes from, actually try and remember this. The um, co coefficient of the unknown multiplied. Now remember, where did we get this? This wasn't something we knew, it was something we calculated. There, we take the, co the concentration of the known multiplied by the volume of the known that we used, what we read of there, divided by the coefficient of the known okay and that gives me the concentration uh, the the moles used that i don't want moles used i want concentration so this whole thing in order to get concentration the unknown concentration i must take the unknown moles divided by volume so this whole value that i here have here divided by volume or i can just add volume in here. Now this was the volume for the unknown value. The unknown volume here. Volume of unknown. Volume of unknown. And here we got a great formula that if you want to you can remember, try and remember this. This is a formula to get the concentration of an unknown substance uh, without going through incredible uh, lengthy steps. You might as well remember this if you know where this comes from. Please don't try and remember this if you don't know where it comes from. So uh, since this video has gone on long enough, I will in the next video use an example to show you all of this. Not using the formula, that's that's a lazy method, um, but you're welcome to use it. I'll just show you, uh, you um, a normal titration, titration process using the standard procedures. Uh, I'll see you in that video.